Thanks, Don. It really was riveting. I didn't expect uh, it to be uh, so gripping either, and I would encourage you to go and, and look online uh, for the court case. Uh, last week, the Dr. Peter Aids Foundation was at the Supreme Court of Canada as an intervener in the Insight case. It was an honor to be there and to contribute in some small way, hopefully to a positive outcome. While the Supreme Court case was specifically about insight, the outcome, I believe, will fundamentally shape the future of Canadian drug policy for years to come. It will address, are we going to continue to treat people who inject drugs as criminals or are we going to provide appropriate health care? Supervised injection has become an area where law has not caught up with progress in public health. Supervised injection service has become mainstream thinking in health care, as evidenced by the interveners in the Supreme Court, the Canadian Medical Association, the Canadian Public Health Association, the Canadian Nurses Association, the Registered Nurses Association of Ontario, the BC Association of Registered Nurses, the BC Nurses Union. Do you see a pattern? Yay, nurses! <laughs> <laughs> and, and certainly Donald's comment, that, and I'll get to it a bit later, that's certainly the crux of how the Dr. Peter Aids Foundation uh, started supervised injection service about 18 months before uh, Insight opened. I was quite encouraged that all the judges were so openly and sometimes so blatantly critical of the federal government. And, and, and just to uh, give you a, a, a quick uh, a sidebar on the two issues that the, the judges were asked to rule on, uh, essentially Portland Hotel Society and Van Du put forward that shutting down inside was uh, a, a breach of a person's uh, uh, security of person under Section 7 of the Charter. So it's a Charter of Rights and Freedoms issue. And the other was that inside is a healthcare facility that is the domain of the provincial government and not one that the federal government has a right to tamper in. So that was the two, that is the two things in question. So I'm not a lawyer who watches judges every day and I'm looking forward to Monique uh, commenting uh, shortly. But from the level of sensitivity they expressed for the health impacts in their questioning, I can't imagine them not ruling in favor of insight. So I'm going to go way out on a limb. Remind them, I'm not a lawyer. Um, I think there's a good chance they will rule that it is a Section 7 security of person issue. And they'll provide specific directions to the federal government on how the jurisdictional issue is to be dealt with. So, let's assume I'm right, so I can get on with laying out my vision of the future of Canadian drug policy as a result. <laughs> if I'm not correct, it's over to Donald, and I'll leave him with the challenge of laying out that grim prospect <laughs> in his new role. A ruling in favor of insight will be a ruling in favor of health care and harm reduction. It will certainly open the door to supervised injection service in towns and cities throughout the country. Downtown Eastside residents who have access to insight have a health and survival advantage which should be available to others in similar circumstances elsewhere in the country. It would only be fair. The Dr. Peter Center has shown, from its experience over the past nine years, that integrating supervised injection service is possible in a health clinic with a broad range of other health care services and in a clinic providing care to people who use drugs and people who don't. Such an integrated approach to supervised injection would make the service more economical for smaller towns and cities where there are a smaller number of people injecting. It would also make it possible for Vancouver Coastal, for example, to provide the service in their community health clinics throughout Vancouver. 
Ooh. Hopefully Vancouver Coastal is not going to come walk me on the head right now. <laughs> uh, the Dr. Peters Center has also built supervised injection into nursing practice in its 24-hour skilled nursing care residence. The service is provided in the, re the residence private suites. I can say unequivocally that such an approach in a residential care environment is an incredibly stabilizing feature. Individuals who needed 24-hour care but were chronically entrenched in street living finally had a home that accepted them. And there needs to be more 24-hour residential care homes integrating supervised injection service. So from our perspective, supervised injection is a practice, as in a nursing practice, not a specific place or room. Overall, the Dr. Peters Center has stuck with a simple message, stating and restating supervision of injections is part of registered nursing practice. And, and Donald mentioned that we started this when uh, we approached the College of Registered Nurses of British Columbia for a practice clarification. And they provided us with a written clarification that it was within the scope of registered nursing practice for a nurse to supervise injections for the purposes of preventing illness and promoting health. So a favorable insight case would potentially open more doors than access to supervised injection from my perspective. We know, for example, the harms associated with severely addicted individuals turning to organized crime to buy their drugs is quite a concern. A favorable inside case would potentially open the door uh, around this security of person issue uh, to a case for access for access to prescription heroin as a health and security of person issue. Mm -hmm. And it would potentially open the door to a case for substitution therapy for co cocaine and other stimulants as a health and security of person issue. I'm sure you could think of other examples where severely addicted individuals are put in harm's way to cope with their addiction. As I was preparing that last paragraph, a brain cell fired, thinking maybe we need to replace the term harm reduction with security of person. It is essentially what harm reduction is designed to achieve, security of person. It makes it easier to articulate the seriousness of the matter we are actually talking nothing <laughs> short of charter of rights and freedoms, security of person issues. Finally, <clears throat> the federal government may look back and regret the day they took insight to the Supreme Court of Canada. <laughs> <laughs> I am stunned by the number of Joe Blow mainstream citizens uh, since I returned from Ottawa uh, who have listened to the media coverage and can't believe the federal government was sh shut inside down. I think if more and more citizens are getting their heads around the concept of a safe place to inject drugs, there is hope they will also get their heads around support for additional measures towards healthcare and security of person, uh, of person for people who use drugs. <coughs> then more politicians will follow and then we will have transformed Canada's drug policy. 